Hi guys, good morning. This is Dr. Satya Bama here for Raw Online. And the topic for today is about condyla fractures. You must be thinking, ma'am, why condyla fractures in specific? And um, yeah, this is becoming much, much more important um, than what we uh, were emphasizing earlier. People were not treating these fractures, we were treating them conservatively. There's a lot of uh, controversies around this fracture. But then we realized these patients who are not being treated are coming back to us with problems. That's why. Okay. Now, when you look at the injuries of the condyle, um, now this particular line here that is drawn, that's around the uh, perpendicular to the uh, sigmoid notch that is drawn. Now, that divides the condyle into the subcondylar area. So, this is your subcondylar area. That's your neck of the condyle and that is the head of the condyle, okay? Now, if you draw a tangent from the sigmoid notch to a tangent to the maximum width of the condylar head, okay, that becomes the neck of the condyle, okay? Now, the line above this uh, maximum uh, width of the condyle is called the head and the line below the perpendicular to the sigmoid notch is called the subcondylar region up to the angle of the mandible, this particular line here. This particular landmark, you really have to be very uh, sure of, very assertive of when anybody is asking you about, do you know what the uh, condylar region is, what the subcondylar region is? Yeah, the subcondylar region is a region between the perpendicular drawn from the sigmoid notch area to the angle of the uh, mandible. So that is my subcondylar region. But if I draw a line, passing through the maximum convexity of the head and the perpendicular to the sigmoid notch, that becomes my neck. And if I divide that equally, then the area above is called the high neck region, high neck region, and the line below that, midway below that is the low neck region. So we have the condyla head, high neck fractures, low neck fractures, subcondylar fractures, okay? There can be, apart from the fracture, there can be a dislocation or a contusion. Dislocation is the condylar head dislocating from the, that's your glenoid fossa. If the condylar head is dislocating from the glenoid fossa, that becomes dislocation. If there is contusion, if there is just bruising and injuries and hemarthrosis happening within the joint, then that's becoming contusion, okay? So, that's a, those are the injuries of the condyle. Obviously, they can be either unilateral, one side or bilateral. It can be within the capsule. Remember, we talked about the capsule completely engulfing the temporomandibular joint. So, it can happen within the capsule or it can happen outside the capsule. It can be simple, compound or comminuted. Those are the fractures of the condyle. This is a beautiful classification. Okay, There is a fracture there that is happening, but there is no displacement. There is a fracture and there is a deviation. It is deviated. Still the head is, is within the glenoid fossa and it is deviated. Okay, it is still in contact with the fragment that is at the base. Here it is deviated, but look at the fragments. The fragments have completely displaced. Okay, they are not in unity with each other. They are not in contact with each other. So it's completely displaced, right? This is it is not displaced, it is still in continuity, in continuity, but it is not within the glenoid fossa socket, okay? The glenoid fossa socket is here, but the head is deviate, is completely, completely dislocated. So, deviation and dislocation, okay? Whereas E, dislocated, I agree, and it is displaced, the fragments are displaced. So, understand, I will repeat it, there the fractures are there, it has happened, fracture is in position, there is nothing that has happened to either the head or the fragments, they are in continuity. So, no displacement, here it is in continuity, but it is deviated, here it is completely out of continuity with the fragment. So, this is displacement. 
okay you can call it displacement and deviation here the complete head is out of the socket it's dislocated and deviated this is dislocated and displaced okay all right according to wasserman wasserman's classification in 1934 he classified type 1 where the angle between the head and the ramus is around 10 to 45 degrees he based on how much of displacement how much of um, deviation the fragment head has in relation to the ramus okay now if the condyla fragment head is here then that's 90 degrees okay this is 180 degrees if it is straight 180 degrees okay this is 90 degrees 